Hi, it's Mike Chen. The long and very heated debates of who were the first inhabitants of the Americas and how long ago were they here just got even more interesting. Because until now, researchers generally believe people came to the Americas during the end of the Ice Age and walked from Asia to Alaska via the frozen Bering Straits, and then either walked or took boats down the Pacific coast around 15,000 years ago. Of course, this timeline is also debatable with some estimates that differ by hundreds or thousands of years. But now, according to a new report published in the journal, nature, that number could be off by a hundred thousand years. According to this new report, researchers say a mysterious group of people traveled to what is now Southern California more than a hundred thousand years before anyone was supposed to have reached the Americas. Scientists came to this conclusion because of mastodon remains that was discovered in what is now San Diego back in 1992 by construction workers. The discovery seemed bizarre because the thick bones were found to be broken and smashed and large round stones were found alongside them. According to Dr. Thomas Demir, curator of paleontology at the San Diego Natural History Museum, which led the project, non-human predators were immediately ruled out because it's kind of hard to envision a carnivore strong enough to break a mastodon leg bone. Researchers also examined the rocks and found scratch marks on them as well as small rock chips that fits perfectly with the rocks themselves, suggesting that these rocks were used as hammers and that people were trying to crush the bones with the stones to get to the marrow, which I totally understand because that's some good eating. According to Dr. Demir, of course, extraordinary claims like this require extraordinary evidence, adding that the team believed the site preserves such evidence. Stephen Holland, another project scientist at the Center for Paleolithic Research said, we have no evidence that this is a kill or butchery site, but we do have evidence that people were here, breaking up bones of the mastodon, removing some of the big thick pieces of mastodon limb bones, probably to make tools and perhaps extracting some of the marrow for food. Now you might be wondering, and I was as well, okay, the bones were found in 1992. It's been like, what, 25 years? How come it took so long to come to this conclusion? That's because the researchers couldn't really date the bones because any soft tissue has already decayed, which prevented the use of radiocarbon dating. So they tried using the uranium thorium method, which measures the radioactive decay of uranium, but that method was not very reliable at the time. So the this whole thing remained a mystery until many years later when uranium thorium dating has much improved and it was concluded that the bones were 130 thousand years old, give or take 10,000 years. But this study, like any and all shocking new claims that dares to challenge the status quo, is not without its detractors. Many archaeologists are saying that the bone fractures and rock scratches were unconvincing. For example, David Meltzer, an archaeologist at Southern Methodist University, said, you can't push human activity in the new world back 100,000 years based on evidence as inherently ambiguous as broken bones and nondescript stones. They need to do a better job showing nature could not be responsible for these bones and stones. Also, Vance T. Holliday, an archaeologist at the University of Arizona, brought up that they present evidence that the broken stones and bones could have been broken by humans, but they don't demonstrate that they could only be broken by humans. So let's say Dr. Demir is right. If the stones and bones really are evidence of people, then who were they? How did they get to this part of the world so long ago? And what happened to them? Those are all questions that, of course, we can't really answer right now. And hopefully, eventually, more clues can turn up. And I love reports like these because it really challenges what we think we know about the world. And, and this is what I, I really can't stand. A lot of detractors of this study, and I don't know if they're right, they could be right, but they always bring up the fact that, well, how come we haven't found any other evidence of these people? How come this is the only site that we found something? Okay. Can, can we just admit that we haven't found a lot of things relating to our ancestors and our history? I mean, we've only explored 5% of the ocean. There are still over a trillion species on this planet that we don't know about. We have only dug less than 10 miles into the earth itself. Can we just admit that there's so much more we don't know than what we do know, you know? I also feel that a lot of mainstream scientists are so stuck on their pedestal that they have just boxed themselves in and anything that doesn't fall in line with their theories or beliefs is just ridiculous to them. You know, that's like going to a Chinese buffet when they're just starting to bring out the food and they only brought out the mashed potatoes and then somebody going in, eating the mashed potatoes and declaring the whole restaurant a golden corral. Okay, maybe that's not the best example, but, but I think there's just so many more things 
not yet uncovered about our world and we should just be open to those possibilities. And guys, if you drive around in your cars a lot and you get bored like I do, especially if you drive long distances, I would definitely recommend downloading an audiobook from Audible. There's actually a ton of books on there that talks about our history and about some of the unexplainable finds or forbidden finds that we have uncovered but we never talk about. So I'll put some of those suggestions for you guys in the comments below. And if you guys click my link below, you'll get free 30-day access to Audible and I really like it, so hopefully you guys as well. And of course, it's a great way to support this channel during this whole apocalypse thing. All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll see you later.